I think I've got it so far. <laughs> it's it's very hard to read. Yeah, well, this will be short. Yeah. Um, well, you can switch on my paper Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, two, four, eight, six, seven, so far, so good. <laughs> okay. No comes. So it's a very simple rule. <laughs> is the one and only Neil Sloan who will talk about coordination sequences, planning numbers, and other recent sequences. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So this, this sequence has a very simple rule, and it will be in the last, one of the last parts of the talk. Uh, it starts at 1, and after a while, it returns to 1. The cycles from that point on. So I invite you to uh, guess the rule. Is it in IIS? Oh, yes. And there's even really 61 in between? No. So you didn't write that. Sorry? Is it really 61? No, you didn't finish the number, no? So presumably it's 6,140. 61. 61, really? Yes. <laughs> and then it's 1. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to talk about today is some sequences that I've been having fun with, basically. And uh, so there'll be a, a number of sections, and I begin with a letter that came in uh, in March that really made my day. He, this is from somebody who used to contribute to the OEIS. Um, in the, so he says, he had occasion to use the OEIS that he hasn't used for 15 years, because he's an algebraic geometer now. But when he was in school in Oregon, um, he was interested in mathematics, but he had no one to talk to. And he got interested in the OEIS. He submitted sequences. He became an editor. And uh, he was very active for a while. And then one of his high school teachers helped him. And um, Eventually, he went and got his bachelor's degree, and then he got his PhD, and now he's an algebraic geometer at a famous university not far from here. But why is he anonymous? I didn't have his permission to quote this. Okay. Um, but he says, I doubt if I would have become a mathematician if I, if, if we hadn't, if I hadn't, uh, if he hadn't been uh, uh, encouraged by the OEIS. So I thought that was. That's very heartwarming, but he went out, if he now doing a dramatic geometry. <laughs> it would have been better if he got into yeah, comments for it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the second thing I want to mention is that I just had a birthday. And we don't really have a good person to take over. If the, anything happens to me, we don't have a good substitute, a new person. person. And the reason, we all know, the reason the Roman Empire ended was because of a lack of a clear succession. And so um, I asked the sequence fans for suggestions, and I haven't received any, any good suggestions yet. But um, uh, Hilary Orman, my 
friend Hillary said, uh, be sure to get somebody young. Don't get Prince Charles, get <laughs> Prince William. <laughs> so I'm looking for suggestions. And the requirements are that you should be familiar with English and mathematics and computers and the OEIS. Can we nominate ourselves? <laughs> Sorry? Can we nominate ourselves? Yes, of course. Yeah. You nominate yourself. Mm. I didn't understand the question. Can you nominate yourself? Can you yes, of course. <laughs> yes. yes. Preference. But this one. Um, There's no way anybody can replace you. It has to be a big consortium. Perhaps so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully you're going to do it for another four years. That would be nice. But, you know. Um, okay, so. Okay, well, it's very expensive gadget, as it were. So, um, the next topic is, um, the background to this is that in, in uh, 2004, when we got to 100,000 sequences, we had a lot of contributors and we dec I decided it would be very nice to have a party and invite everybody, but because it was spread out all over the world, it was going to be an electronic party, an e-party. So I invited everybody uh, to send in a toast or a, a quotation, a photograph, and so um, we got uh, 150 guests arrived electronically in the, from 28 countries, and you can see all the pictures if you go to the, the, the wiki, the OEIS wiki. And, um, and, uh, by the way, that was 100,000 in 2014, in 2004, and we increased roughly at 15,000 sequences a year, about 50 a day, roughly speaking. And uh, one of the first contributors was, was Claude Le Normand, who was a very busy contributor around 2001 to 2003, and here he is, um, wishing me long life. And um, I'm not sure about his long life, because I've been trying to get in touch with him. And uh, I, all the emails have bounced. And there have been, it's not such an unusual name, but there were some obituaries with people with that name in the past few years. So I'm not sure he's with us anymore. But he was a contributor. And I've been tidying up my study. And there are many piles of documents in my study that I brought along one of them. There are many folders on the floor of my study in great piles. And this is a typical one. It says, stuff I need to do at once, easy. And the date was uh, May 1997. And near it was a letter from Claude Le Normand called Two Transformations on Words, or on Strings, Sequences, if you like. And uh, the first of his two transformations was the runs transform. So the, when you look at the runs in a sequence, so if you have a sequence of coin tossing, if it's heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tail, tail, heads, this is a run of three, and a run of two, and a run of one, and a run of two. So that the run transform of that sequence is three, two, one, two. And this is a good way to, uh, pro to, to transform sequences into other sequences. So the, the, the a famous example is sequence A2 in the database, Kolokovsky sequence, which has the property, it only consists of ones and twos, and it's its own runs transform. That means the, 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 it begins with a one, so that means the first run has length one. So the next term has to be a two because it's only ones and twos. But because it's a two, there have to be two twos. It's the second term, means the second run has length two. And then we get another run of length two, and then a run of length one, and so on. So it's well defined, it's infinite. It's a famous unsolved problem to find the density of this. Is it about half ones and half twos? It's an open question. I guess no, there's no it, money it involved. is. It's an open question to find a rigorous formal proof of this. <laughs> yes, that's right. But it's obviously true. Probably. <laughs> yeah. 
There's no reason for a bias. But there could be. It's conceivable. Another one of the same kind, with almost the same definition, is uh, Sol Galom's sequence, A1462. And this is defined in the following way. It's, it's only run the terms are positive integers. They're non-decreasing. And it's, its, own, it's the earliest non-decreasing sequence of positive integers, which is its own runs transform. And positive, so you begin with a 1. That says the first run has length 1. Now you could put a 6 after it, but that would mean that you, the next run would have length 6. But 2 would work just as well and is smaller. And you pick the earliest in Mexico graphically order. And so you get 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, Two threes, three three, uh, three fours, three fives, four sixes, and so on. And uh, this is easy to understand. This has a very nice exact formula for the nth term. It's roughly n to the phi minus one. So, if you take um, the nearest integer to the, some well-defined constant involving the golden ratio of phi, constant times n to the phi minus one. Take the nearest integer. The error is tiny, and that gives the sequence precisely. So I made up a couple of, while I was making the slide, um, I looked at hybrids. So uh, sequence A, 156253 is actually an old sequence. It's this sequence where the runs are taken from this sequence. And the new sequence here is this se Golomb sequence where the runs are taken from Kolokovsky's. Maybe those are easier. Maybe that would be worth looking at. I didn't have time. So that was Le Normand's first transformation. Mm -hmm. Runs. The second one. The second one is um, it involved a word I had to look up. Rabote, which means to play in French. Uh, it means you know you have one of these things for smoothing down tabletop or a door so it doesn't squeak. Plain. It's un rabot. Um, and uh, the operation is you plane down the sequence. You shorten every run by one term. So if you took a long sequence, which is one, two, two, three, three, four, 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 there's a run of one, you shorten it and you have a run of zero, so you just get rid of it. Instead of two twos, you have one two. Instead of two threes, you have one three, and so on. And um, that's a, a quite a recent sequence. And I don't know, there should be a simple formula for it, but I haven't looked. I invite you to find a formula for it. But what I did do when I saw this was I looked at what happens if you apply this transformation to the binary expansion of n. So for instance, take, say, the number 11 which is 1011 in binary, you apply his Rabote transformation, what happens to 1011? Well, the 1 disappears, the 0 disappears, and we have two 1s, which become a single 1. So this thing contracts to 1. So the 11th term of the new sequence is 1. Some of them disappear altogether, and you get the empty string. And you should repeat the definition of Rabote? Yes, you take all the runs, you look at the runs, and you shorten each run by one term. Ah. So if you, but I, and I'm doing it just on the binary yeah. expansion. Yeah. So for instance, um, 15, 1, 1, 1, 1, becomes 7. So the, the 15th term is 7. So that's the sequence. And um, there are, you can then look at various questions. If you repeat this, how long does it take before you get to the empty string? I thought that was interesting. And the, the, so I worked out the answer. And it was a bit of a surprise. So take a number, a k plus 1 bit binary number, and apply this transformation. How many steps before it disappears, before you get to the empty string? And the answer is um, exactly the average value over all binary numbers of length k minus 1 is 3 halves to the k minus 1 minus a half. 
and I have no proof of this. Um, so the average, this is the average value of how long it takes to contract repeatedly planing away the number until you get down to the empty stream. Why should it be three halves to the k? Because that's a conjecture, obviously. It's just a conjecture, yeah. I mean, it's exact. It matches the data. So it's an exact formula for the, for the average. Oh, so I added right. them all. I did work them out, added them all up, and divided by uh, 2 to the k, and got this sequence. Well, sequence A, 27649. There's an average of all the... Of all the, the, of the, of all the lengths. Yeah, so, so if we looked at all of these eight sequences in length four, this one dies, uh, it takes, actually takes two steps to get to the empty string. The first step, we get to zero, and the second step, the zero dies, so we get the empty string in two steps. One zero one zero dies right away. In one step, you get the empty string because we kill any run of length one. So the singleton one goes away, the singleton zero goes away. If there are leading zeros, well, we just call it zero. Another thing is, um, uh, I'm sorry, this conjecture is for the value of what you get when you shorten it. The number of steps before it dies for a string The number of steps before it dies seems to be square root of 8k over pi. And again, there's an ex what the numerical data gives an exact formula which matches an old sequence. So there are two conjectures. One is what you get if you do it once on the average. And the other conjecture is what you get well, for if the, you look at how long it takes. Square the, root for of the it. average of the, by the average. So you to talk about other moments, the value. Yeah, cool. Yes, yes. But I don't, and this is just numerical data, looking at the first, you know, 20,000, 30, 32,000. Exact. The first one, the, it, they're both exact, actually. They both, the, so the, the resistance, how many steps it takes, is exactly A189391. And the average value, the average of this column, so if we look at all the numbers between 8 and 15, um, and just look at the average value, it's exactly this number. And this should be a k. And, um, and then one of the OEIS uh, contributors pointed out there's not an inverse to this, which is well known, but you extend all the runs by one bit. So 12. Um, uh, which in binary is 1100, zero, zero, would become 111000, zero, 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 which would be 8 times 756. So that's growing all the runs by one bit. And um, obviously, if you do that and then apply the other length of this, the other operation, you get back to where you started. But the converse isn't true, you get a new sequence to do that. So, um, uh, let's call this operation expanding M. Well, I looked at the data and it seemed that there's an upper bound which is met sometimes at 9n squared plus 12n over 5. And I conjectured that and Maximilian Hassler uh, proved it without much difficulty. So we know the, an upper bound. And then there's a question about what's the average you expand a number, and, um, and there's a number down there too. And uh, I should also mention Chai Wa Wu at IBM, has, uh, he has a paper on the archive about these things. A very recent archive paper. And then, um, if you, you know you can play any sequence um, in the OEIS, if you click the listen button, and I would like to play in memory of Claude Lemont, the yeah. Assuming that he's dead. 
on the previous slide. How did you map each number to the key on the keyboard? Mod 88 mm -hmm. mapped to the keys of the grand, the standard grand piano with 88 keys. So far, I think you'll see. So, so, mod, so it's mod 87, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, mod 88, yes. it, I'm I'm, there are 88 keys, and I just reduce it. Is that your favorite tune? Or what no, it's not my favorite, but it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so the next subject is coordination sequences. So you, you, you may remember, I've given out this postcard. This is the poster, the most recent poster for the OIS. And these are nine, um, eight of them were unsolved. This, this was um, sequence A250120, which is, it had a conjecture about what a formula was for it. And that's on the next slide. So, um, so it's, it's on the poster, and that particular question looks at this tiling. This is a tiling of the plane by hexagons and triangles, regular hexagons. It's one of the 11 uniform tilings of two-dimensional space. The conditions are that you must have regular polygons, and um, uh, every point must be equivalent to every other point under the automorphism group. It must be uh, uniform in the sense it doesn't matter which point you look at, you always see um, any point, you see one, two, three, four triangles and axis. It's tiling that's called the 3336 uniform tiling. And what we're interested in is the coordination sequence which means pick a point, pick any point, they're all the same, so pick that point. Okay, and now look at how many neighbors there are that are one step away in this graph, in the skeleton of this tile. So there are one, two, three, four, five uh, neighbors. So the coordination sequence begins one, five, nine. There are nine green vertices, I don't know if you can see them, that are two steps away from the black, and then there are 15 yellow, and so on. So that's the sequence. And the question is, um, what, what is that sequence? How does it grow? And there was a conjecture by several people saying various things, generating function and a recurrence. And the simplest version of the recurrence is that a of n plus 5 is a of n plus 24, beyond so if you go out five steps, the number has increased by 24. It was a conjecture. It was on the postcard. And the postcard was sent out to lots of people. Many people saw the poster. But we, we've solved that. Um, uh, Hein, Gutten, Strauss, and I have been working on this. And uh, so this is joint work with, with Hein, Gutten, Strauss. And there are various other people who have contributed to, the, to this this old project over the, uh, of, it's been mostly going on this year, but also a little bit in earlier years. So, uh, John Ryong Eon and Brian Gollerbach, Joseph Myers, 
Davida Prosepio, Remy Segrist, Alan Wexler, and others who have contributed to this, helping in various ways, contributing uh, sequences and pictures and conjectures and so on. So here's the problem. We start off with a graph. And we pick a point, a node, a vertex in the graph, call it P. And then we look at how many other vertices there are at each distance. That are, how many are n steps away from the base point? So here, this is the square grid, a nice example. Um, graph paper. Right? This is the tiling called 4444, four, 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 because at each point there are four squares. Right? And so the coordination sequence begins 1, and then 4, and then 8, and then 12, 16, and so on. And if we were to draw more, you'd see they, the shells form squares. And the nth shell has four end points. So the sequence, the coordination sequence, is 1, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. It's the square, its generating function is the square of the coordination sequence for the integers, the Jacobi theta, theta 3 theta function. So it's 1 plus 2x plus 2x squared plus 2x cubed, etc. squared. And three dimensions, you get the cube. So, um, what are coordination sequences useful for? Well, they have a lot of applications because uh, chemists like them, so you have dense uh, um, substances. Uh, I've been pushing the idea that they can be, our method can be used for um, communication networks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're also particularly good for identifying, identifying networks, crystals, graphs, and so on. So if you walk down the hill from here in the snow, you come to Johnson Park, and near the zoo, and the road through the park, there are, there, you see on the road this pattern of bricks. And I walked by it many times, and then I decided, well, you know, what is this? What's the, what is this graph? So I worked out the coordination sequences. So this is a pattern of bricks, right? Johnson Park, not far from here. Um, and you see the bricks are like this. They're, it's not quite the square tiling. Every square has been divided alternately, horizontally, and vertically. And if you look at it, you see there are two kinds of points. There are points where there are four lines coming in, tetravalent points. And there are points where three lines come in, trivalent points. There are two kinds of points, that's all. And if you look at the theta, the, the coordination sequence for the degree four point, you find, to your surprise, it goes 1, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. And if you look at, up for a point of degree 3, the sequence goes 1, 3, 8, 12, 15, 20, 25. So, of course, the first thing you do is you look it up in the OEIS. And you find, to your surprise, that this is a sequence that I had been studying earlier in the year with Heim. It's the Cairo tiling. And the reason that, so, let me, I, I would like to draw the Cairo tiling because, um, Here's the Cairo tile. I'm told that if you go to Cairo, they have a lot of streets paved with the with the uh, the kind of this tiling. It's a tiling by pentagons. And so let me draw it. You start off by drawing hexagons, slightly distorted. So first of all, you make a grid of hexagons. And then in the middle of each hexagon, you draw a horizontal line, which occupies about a third of the diameter of the... Then you 